you know what's tragic? I just <clears throat> made this video with the microphone turned off, so I have to redo this again, but the, maybe the second video is gonna be better better than the first one. So um, we're trying to make this uh, sin diol, and I want you to remember the retrosynthetic analysis. You don't think about the study material, right? You focus on the target, and then you just simply think about how do I introduce these functional groups I see. And here it's just the um, sin dial that we have to have. And so you could make this from um, sin dihydroxylation of trans, or uh, right, like if you think about rotating this bond here, like that, uh, this is the same as anti-dial uh, that is made from cis. So you could make this potentially from a cis double bond. To do the syn dihydroxylation, remember you need something like osmium tetroxide and hydrogen peroxide, or you could do cold diluted potassium permanganate, one of the two. To do the um, anti-dihydroxylation, you would need to um, first make an epoxide and then open that up in with a strong acid catalyst in water, and that would give you the anti. But uh, if you do that from cis, you would end up with the same product. And of course here, um, we're gonna get racemic, but that's okay, okay? Um, both of these actually can be made from alkyne, right? Like here the question is, how do, I, how do you make <coughs> these alkenes? To make alkenes, one way is to do elimination reactions. Uh, but especially given that this is in the context of an alkyne chapter, maybe you could think of a way to make this from alkyne through re a partial reduction. And to make trans, you do that through the radical anion intermediate using alkali metal in ammonia. To do partial hydrogenation, you need hydrogen gas, of course, but then you need a poison catalyst like Lindler's catalyst, which looks like that, right, and those two things, palladium deposited on barium sulfate and quinoline. And <clears throat> to make this alkyne, internal alkyne, again, there's a couple of ways to do it. You could uh, do a double elimination from dihalide, or uh, you could um, add some carbons, like right there at that carbon uh, bond. Uh, in retrosynthetic analysis jargon, sometimes we say we dissect the molecule at that bond because I know we know that we have to make that uh, bond, and that would, should, would be the case because if you compare the starting material to the products, I want you to notice how there's two extra carbons added to the product. So this would be the perfect opportunity to do, to do so, right from um, that terminal alkyne first by deprotonating the, the terminal proton and then add things like that, right? That would do it. Now, uh, this terminal alkyne now would, could then be formed from vicinal dihalide like this. You would need excess of strong base and then you need to protonate the alkyne a resulting alkynide ion, so it becomes neutral. Now, um, as we talked about this in class, you could actually do this in one go by just doing excess strong base, and it doesn't have to be LDA, it could be like um, soda med or potassium TB toxide, and then add your um, SN2 substrate after. So either works. Now, to make the um, uh, vicinal dihalide, right, like you would just need to do bromination reaction, just like you guys did with cinnamic acid the other day, right? Now, to make this terminal olefin, which is appears to be a Hoffman product, 
the double bond is in a less substituted position, uh, we would need to do E2 reaction on this study material right here uh, with a bulky base, like potassium t-butoxide, for example, and heat, something like that. Okay, so that's that problem. Um, another one that we didn't go over in class is this last one. And of course, we notice right off the bat that um, it has one, two, three extra carbons. One of those could come from, this is of course a nitrile functional group, but this could come from a cyanide ion, which is a strong acid, I mean, excuse me, strong nucleophile. Uh, so this, this uh, nitrile group could be introduced through an SN2 reaction because cyanide is a really, really strong nucleophile. So with that in mind, let's think about um, how to synthesize this. So like we said, if you have potassium or sodium cyanide, like say in DMF or something like that, If you have a leaving group like that, bromide, right? Uh, that would do it. Now, <clears throat> not, um, uh, this is just a simple SN2 reaction. Now, how would you make this um, anti Markovnikov bromide? Because bromide seems to be on a less substituted carbon. So that's something to notice about this product or functional group we're trying to make so then we need to think about how you would introduce that to uh, say a double bond in an anti-Markovnikov fashion if you just did hydrogen bromide of course it would give you a Markovnikov product where the bromide would be secondary but you could make anti-Markovnikov uh, remember by making this a radical reaction by adding that peroxide which is in your um, chapter 8 notes as well as in your chapter 10 notes now to make this alkene terminal alkene uh, there's again many ways to do it um, but um, you could you could do an elimination e2 reaction to make that but the number of carbons doesn't match with the study material this alkene has two extra carbons than the study material so um, we might have to do a similar thing we did earlier with um, alkyne because we know how to make alkyne carbon bonds right with an SN2 reaction in fact if you did something like that Right, that would do it. Remember this sodium, of course, would be spectator ion, and then you would have a alkynide anion. That's what that is, <clears throat> through SN2 reaction. So now the only question is how to reduce that alkyne to the alkene, and then you could do uh, one of two ways, because here the trans and cis does not matter because the terminal alkyne carbon has two hydrogens right there. So um, you could do um, sodium in ammonia, and that would work. Or you could do uh, hydrogenation with poisoned catalyst, like Lindler's catalyst. Maybe we'll just put that down. Right there. Okay, so that's it.